Hey everyone, uh, welcome back, welcome back. Well, I made some um, modifications and some upgrades and some changes to the uh, bile digester here that I built. Now, for a lot of you guys that are interested in this biogas, bile digester stuff, um, I made a playlist of all the stuff that I've put together to a certain degree. Uh, so definitely check my channel out, look for the playlist, it'll kind of walk you guys through some of the um, how I built this and you know all the what, what I had to do to basically get to where I'm at now um, Let's kind of go over um, Where I'm at right now. So originally my gas outlet ports that I have two one going here and the other one over here Where you guys see a union now it used to be taller It used to be taller than the feed pipe So what I did was I actually measured so first of all, there's a comment or somebody messaged me a private message asking a couple little questions So let's clear clarify that really quick. So this biodigester is filled to the rim to the very top with water Okay um, When this first started off I started off with um, cow manure. Okay, I started off with almost three quarters of a trash can full of manure I just put you know because at that point I was starting it up. So there was no water in it yet so from the top port here I just opened it up, dumped it all down in there, and filled it up with water, and I just let it sit for over a month. That's all I did to get it going. Um, and then basically I bled off the, because uh, it's, it's going to start building pressure, right, because it's starting to do its thing. Um, I bled off some of it that was just oxygen. Uh, and then once I realized that I had a flammable flame, um, then I know I'm making um, biogas, right, uh, methane that can be used now. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, how I kind of got it started. But um, I shortened the um, gas outlet pipes, and I put a quick release on, um, a union on each side. And I, the reason I did this, guys, is before we get into any of this stuff, is because this is a two inch pipe and here's a here's my advice if you guys are going to make a biodigester um, if you make it on a small scale you're going to make small amounts of gas because it's small right if you make it on a bigger scale of course you're going to be able to produce more gas but that also means that you need more stuff to put into that into this device so it can be um, broken down and turned into um, usable gas so those are the little pros and cons i know a lot of you guys out there testing with like a really f small bucket and yeah you can make some biogas out of it yes but it's going to be small amounts you know so the bigger you go the, the better it's going to be technically for this um, but now the reason I put these unions on is because you know you want to have first of all you want to make sure you use the biggest pipes you can get um, there's a reason for that especially for the feed pipe the feed pipe the feed pipe and the gas outlet pipes the feed pipe I would recommend not using two inch pipe this is a three inch pipe with a four inch reducer on top of it acting as like a funnel now you want to have it big because the stuff that you're throwing in here um, you know, you need space. You need room to throw the stuff in here. So, and I have a push rod right here that I, I made an adapter on the end. I just found an old pole, found a handle I could mount to it. So some of the stuff you throw in here doesn't want to sink, of course, right? It wants to float. So I push the push it all down at the very bottom. It's got a cut in the pipe, so it just flows out into the bottom of the biodigester. But um, th that's the that's the main reason why you want a bigger pipe because when you have a two inch pipe, it's it's small and it's hard to fit a lot of stuff down in there, food or whatever you're throwing in it. So you know you want a bigger pipe for sure. Now the gas outlet pipes do not use anything in my mind. Do not use any anything smaller than two inch because when you make the cuts inside here so right below this uniseal here and right below that uniseal right there right below it is I'm um, there's a circular cut into the pipe um, I believe it's a uh, let's see uh, one and a half inch cut into the pipe okay and it's at the very top it's right underneath this uniseal because gas is going to rise right so when it rises we want it to be able to just flow right into this port and go up the tube on both sides and come out right here where the t is well let's say for instance depending on what you're throwing in here especially on the smaller pipe ones um let's say that gets clogged up with stuff that's floating right without having a t up here with a cap or a union here um, it's almost going to be impossible for you to clean out. Let's, you know what I mean? Like say there is a bunch of stuff slowly getting over here and it starts to clog up that gas outlet port that you drilled into the pipe. You have to have a way to be able to, you know, flush it out or clean it out real quick. So when I modified this 
first of all, like I said, I cut off probably about three inches from each side to bring it lower. Um, also, now if for some reason the gas is not able to escape because it's getting clogged up, I can eat, you know I can easily just bleed off the system and remove the union and remove this top part, and I can actually just send a uh, like a, another piece of rod or pipe or whatever in here just to kind of you know clean out the where the where it's clogged up you know you can kind of go up and down to kind of clean it out um so that's the reason why i put the unions on um now i also changed out all the nipples again and i changed out all the poly tubes again um originally i had a 3 8 tube and it was working okay but um we want to be able to have more flow okay think about it like a straw you have a big straw you can suck more in right uh, you have a small straw it's going to take you a little bit longer right so s same theory okay uh, so i changed out all the nipples every single nipple to uh half inch and this is half inch um, um id uh, inside the diameter of this poly tube so it fits you know pretty snugly over this in fact it's so tight you know i make make it over like one or two barbs and that's it's super tight already but it is air airtight because i did and here's another thing too that it's not going to be holding a whole lot of pressure the idea is to bleed it off into a you know store it into a bag or a biogas bag or a inner tube or whatever you know store it into something that you can use it you know take it somewhere and use it whatever uh, so that's the gas outlet pipes. Um, that's all the nipples and the line. I also changed out. So basically, what you guys see here is my 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 fill. You know, so this is like a biogas um, filling station now. Okay, because I have a little thing. I'm gonna make a little adapter here so I can connect to all my um, the bags or whatever I'm gonna be filling up. You know. And so this is another way I can test to see if the gas is flammable. So when I opened up this system to cut that out, I basically bled off whatever um, biogas, I mean, uh, yeah, biogas methane that was there. So when I did that, you know, I'm kind of starting from scratch again because it's got air and everything, right? Uh, so today is technically the first day that it's a closed system again, and I'm letting it build back up. Okay, so let me walk you guys through the what what's happening with these devices here. So as the gas comes up the gas outlet pipes and goes up to this T and comes out of this hose, comes down, it goes into this water filter. Now this water filter, it's not filtering water, okay? We're not using it to filter water, we're using it to filter the, the biogas, okay? So I don't know if you guys can see it right here, it's not filled all the way to the top. It's only filled um, maybe about an inch or two inches above the um, bottom of the pipe that I installed in the middle so what I had to do was I had to kind of just reverse how this works so the gas outlet is coming out from my biodigester coming down this line and it actually goes into the out port for this filter because this out port goes into the middle and in the middle there's a, con a connection where you can connect a pipe so I connect my pipe up into that and it's nice and secure and tight. Then I went ahead and filled it up with just enough water where when it bubbles through, at least the water can filter um, some of that um, gas that's coming through. So that's the first stage of filtering the gas. Okay. Then it basically just comes up through here and there's no, no pipe on this side. So it just rises and it comes out this way, goes out through here. And I made my loop come up like this because you guys can see the condensation that's building because we got the sun on it. And, you know, as you start, you know, pumping gas through it's going to be more of a wet gas at that point so i made this go up so that way if it has to fill up start condensating in this pipe it's just going to want to roll right back down into the device and same thing right here so you guys can see there's a little moisture right here in the pipe so same thing you know it's if there's moisture coming here and it builds up enough it'll finally just roll right back down in there so i'm just trying to keep it where if any moisture builds up or starts puddling in there it'll just roll right back down into this container oh it's not focusing there we go it's rolling right back into this container okay so now um after it comes out of this it goes into here what i did was this is also two two inch pipes it was one 10 footer and i just there's the scraps over there um i went ahead and cut these two pieces are identical in height except i have one mounted a little bit lower than the other but basically it comes in and i um basically put a um coupling with a reducer so that way it could accept a um half inch um barbed fitting on the top and bottom that way i could plug my holes onto it now before i um closed up both ends of this um i actually this is actually filled up with steel wool 
a lot of it lots of steel wool in this one and that one basically i just went and bought a whole bunch of packs um i didn't want to make it too tight but i wanted to make it where you know it there's no really dead space in the pipe so basically it is filled from the bottom all the way to the top with steel wool so as it comes through the first stage of filtering goes in through here and the steel wool will help filter out that gas even more now the reason i did it like this on the bottom where it loops up and comes back around is so let's say a lot of moisture for whatever reason gets past the loops and it comes down into here i can easily remove one of the hoses from the barb the barb fitting and let the water drain out if there's any water um so far i've been you know playing around with it i haven't seen any moisture get past this top loop right here it just basically just stays kind of within this area so that's pretty cool but yeah it goes through gets filtered through the first stage of um steel wool goes through that loop and it comes right back up and this next pipe is identical to that one where it's filled up with steel wool as well from the bottom all the way to the top and then i have my barb fitting from here connect it to my holes so now the gas is pretty much co almost completely clean i mean there's i have tested this guys i don't smell any smell anymore um it's the the flame is really really blue now it was real blue before without any of this really but it's you know there's no orange there's no orange um color in the flame anymore at all um it is basically just really really bright blue now uh so you know we're doing a good job on scrubbing it out so basically what i have here now is a biogas filling station uh so basically all i'm doing right now is allowing it to restart back up in the sense to bleed out that oxygen from when i did the the modifications uh and then once i realize i'm going to keep purging it uh maybe at the end of every single day i'll come out open it up just to see um if we have flammable gas yet and then once we do have flammable gas i'll bring my biogas bag back out here and hook it up to the bag and i'll just leave the valve completely open so it can just free flow so every day it'll just start pumping gas into that bag so i don't have to come out here and turn valves or whatever you know now here's another thing too let's say if you fill up all your storage bags and you have enough gas and it's still producing well technically all you'd have to do is open up this valve and as it produces it'll get scrubbed but it'll get just released to the to the um, environment anyway now um think about it the stuff that's in here anyway would be producing the same amount of greenhouse gases if you just left this open you know so there's you're you know you're not you're not um damaging the environment any more than than what it would the natural process of this stuff not being in here anyway you know if you had if you know a cow patty you know for instance it's going to gas off and do its own thing anyway right um so just think about it like that so but here i'm going to give you guys a little sh um a little ex um i'll show you guys what's going to happen when i open up this valve i'm not going to light it because it's a little breezy today but um plus i'm waiting to the end of the day to, to test it but i'm going to go ahead and open the valve and you'll see that we'll have um bubbles come down and gas coming out of here so this is the first stage of cleaning so let's get the shot and let's open up the valve. Okay, so as you guys can see, there's a little pressure in there, but not much, right? So I am basically, like I said, bleeding off the system until I get flammable gas. So right now, technically, it is not flammable 100% right now um, because I did my modifications. But right before I did these mods, um, the gas was absolutely flammable. I have videos up. You guys can definitely check check it out. I did a night view where the flame was just <laughs> big. Let's put it that way, big and hot. Okay. So um, this is basically the last modifications I'm going to make on this, um, and that's it. You know, I'm just going to hook up my bags now and start filling it up once I set I have flammable gas again. Um, I am now only. Um, I did put in one five another five gallon bucket of manure um of a uh, cattle manure or cow manure uh probably mm, maybe four or five days ago just to kind of you know i wanted to add a little bit more just to kind of get the whole process really going uh so that's going to be the last manure i i add to this device uh so now going forward i'm only feeding it um 
uh, food scraps because the manure stage is pretty much done for now um, we're just going to be using food scraps in order to keep the process going now so I as you guys can see I got like an old bunch of bananas here old fan of bananas so I'm just letting it sit out here kind of get more soft and everything and then I'll just break it all up and smash it all up and throw it down the tube I also had maybe a brown paper bag full of food waste that I also threw in yesterday afternoon um, you know because that's the whole purpose of this is throw your food waste into this instead of just going into your septic tank or outside anyway so uh yeah and then this top piece right here is not glued because there's no reason to, to glue this so that means i can always you know remove this off like this and you know i could cut the pipe down or add a bigger flange or whatever i want to do um that's why i never glued that one piece but everything else is absolutely glued so yes um it is filled to the top with water um i had a question about why doesn't the gas um does gas come out of the feed port and the, the waste port and now think about this guys the, these pipes are solid they go all the way to the bottom that one is solid and goes to the middle so technically the the majority um surface area here when it produces gas is only going out through the gas pipes now depending on how how often you're feeding your biodigester um you'll probably if you do produce any gas it's going to be very very small amounts and it won't even be worth even trying to chase down and deal with um uh, because as you put more food in here you're pushing it down so that so the food cannot just sit in the pipe and start to make biogas and start gassing off it just not going to happen because you're throwing water back in here you're throwing more food every other day so you know you're not going to be producing I don't want to say you won't be producing any, but I want to say if you do, it's like very mi minor minutes, whatever is sitting in the pipe. And so as you feed, it gets displaced, right? So the water or whatever's in that those pipes just don't have enough time to sit there and produce gas and, you know, do that. So um, I wouldn't even, you know, consider trying to cap it because it just wouldn't make no sense. So um, I hope that answers some of the questions on, you know, how full, how full it really is. And um, now here's the thing too, because the the uh the waste port is you know i have to make it higher than the cage right and so basically when you do fill it up the water line in here technically is about here maybe right around in this area right before it falls off and comes down the tube so right in here is how far the water is up and so how far the water is up in all of these right because this is going to be the 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 exit port so the water line would technically be this high in a sense but um if you're not feeding it and it's starting to break down um what you'll notice is that the water level will start to come down in here just a, a little bit at a time and then what you'll notice is is that instead of your tank being bowed because there's some pressure in these tanks i mean in these pipes now from the weight of the water pushing it up you'll notice the top will come more flat um, because you know the water level in there has dropped down to where it's more level with the top of the tank itself so i hope that explains um a little bit about that uh so yeah um and here's another thing too guys i got my crew of guys out here digging footings and putting my footings in right see me over here messing around with this and they're like what the hell is this thing you know and so i explained to them what it is and i showed them you know the video of the flame and all that stuff and they're you know their their minds and their eyes open so big because they didn't even know what this was they don't know what it does how it works and it works great right so um they're you know i was able to educate them and they're you know they're thinking about in the back of their head they're like whoa wait a minute so free gas free cooking gas free heating gas so many things right so um i got them thinking about things you know and I've explained that, explained it to them how this all works, how the pipes are cut. So if they ever wanted to make their own, they could easily make their own, you know. Um, I don't mind sharing the information. That's the whole point of this, you know. So, but yeah, I, you know, it's definitely um, something to see when you see these guys get interested in something like this. You know, they're like, hey, wait a minute. That's such a great idea, you know. Instead of buying propane when you can just make your own gas, you know. So that's another thing too so yeah anyway guys just want to give you guys some footage of this and the uh, modifications and how everything's looking so um i'll just probably keep adding some food waste day to day um but i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna let it sit because i put enough food enough stuff in here I'm just gonna let it sit for about a week or more without adding anything else to it let's let it do its thing start producing some really good clean gas again uh gas and then we can um you know start storing that gas and then if i start noticing that the gas production starts to taper off a little bit then i can start throwing way more stuff in there right so now here's another thing that i got going on 
So I live in an environment where it is, it never gets freezing cold. Okay. I live in Hawaii, so it doesn't snow. It doesn't get, we don't, nothing ices up. It does get chilly, but it doesn't get freezing cold. Nowhere near it. Like the main, like a lot of you guys in the mainland. Uh, so that's a blessing for us in a way, right? Cause then I don't have to worry about my biodigester coming to an ice block and freezing and then busting. Right. So, um, that's the benefit of living in certain areas. But with that said, um, we want to keep this as, as warm, warm or hotter as possible right so what i got right here is a very simple low-tech solution to heating the back sides of where the sun is not heating a basic mirror okay there's no moving parts here the base you know the mirror just reflects the the sun right onto the back side where the sun is not hitting and it, it's able to um, kind of more heat this side of the the tank so my idea i had two ideas either get three good size mirrors probably about the same diameter or same square size and i can position them in a certain way that way when the sun crosses the sky you know no matter what one of the mirrors is it's getting hit and is um, putting the rays onto the tank to keep the back sides um you know more hotter than colder because the sun you know is hitting basically like one side of it right not the other side so i i did been planning out the, the mirrors and it's been working out pretty good uh, so that might be a solution for some of you. Um, now, the other thing I was thinking about was basically using solar hot water. Okay. Um, I came up with a couple ideas. Uh, I'll probably go across that in a different video on how to heat this um, with using solar hot water. Um, but for now, the, the mirror is working. Um, the thing I like about that is just there's no moving parts, right? Just, you know. And when I talk about solar hot water, I'm talking about solar hot water like a hot water heating panel, not solar panel, hot water heating panel, okay? So there's um, another solution I came up with um, to kind of heat the whole tank and be a little bit more efficient on the heating. Um, so I'll, I'll co cover that in another video, but for today, I just want to give you guys a um, overview of what's going on here. Um, yeah, it's, it's doing its thing, guys. Just trying to let it, but here's the thing. Look at the weather. Look at the weather. All cloudy. <laughs> right so of course on the hotter days when it's nice and sunny this thing's going to start cooking up and start really producing more gas the cooler it is or the colder it is um the gas production is going to be very um sm small amounts because you want to keep this like your stomach right so your body is what roughly 90 90 degrees or 98 degrees or whatever it is um, that's the kind of the idea you want to keep this around 90 degrees if much as possible um, If you could do it 24 hours every single day keeping that same temperature this thing will just produce so much gas It'll be insane But every time it starts to cool off the gas production will also cool off So that's things that you need to think about when you're building yours depending on where you live If you live in a snowy area or it gets freezing cold You do have a big challenge to overcome to try to figure out how you're going to keep it heated um I know in some other countries where it gets kind of freezing cold, they'll just basically dig a big hole pretty, you know, pretty deep and set this all the way down. Well, not deep, but to a certain level. And then they'll um, insulate with uh, like bays of bells of hay around it in the hole and then cover it over. Right. Um, that way they can try to maintain the temperature as much as possible. But, you know, depending if your ground is frozen where you live, there's so many variables, guys. Um, luckily, where I live, I don't have to worry about most of that stuff. So, um, you know, as far as heating it, I could just leave it out here in the sun and let it do its thing um, and just accept whatever the gas production is. But if I was able to heat this and keep it more around 90 or whatever it is, um, it's going to produce a lot more gas, of course. So. Yeah, guys, my uh, little independent uh, um, biogas filling station, guys. And it's on a pallet. So the good thing about having it on a pallet is that if I ever want to move this, you can bring down a forklift or a bobcat or whatever, and you can slide the forks underneath and basically lift this thing up and move it wherever you need to, you know? So that's the reason why I built it onto a pallet. Um, it just made more sense if I ever want to move it because we do have a bobcat that we can, um, if I want to move it, we can just put the forks underneath, lift it up and move it, you know? So it's not a big deal really when it comes to that. So anyway, guys, just want to go over this and um, hope that was helpful. Um, I'm glad to see a lot more people trying this out, um, trying to get into it. Um, it's, it's a good thing, guys. Free gas for cooking, heating, whatever, uh, running your generator. Um, oh, that's another thing I should point out. These filters here 
helps to scrub the H2S, okay, out of the gas, the biogas, because that's um, hydrogen uh, sulfur. So you don't wanna have hydrogen sulfur going into your combustion engine, because it's gonna corrode it, and it's gonna make it wanna, it's gonna wanna eat it away, and your in, the internal pistons and stuff like that, right? So you don't wanna have that going in there. So if you scrub the gas, then I could actually plug this into a generator, or to my biogas bag that I'm storing the gas, and, you know, fire up my generator and you know use my generator for free off biogas um, but you do want to scrub the gas as much as possible um i i may add one more tube but not with um steel wool i might add one more tube where it has all clay um clay balls in it like for hydroponics because clay itself for hydroponics it's a pretty good substance where it soaks up water really well um water and moisture but it also dries out really quick right so um I might add one more tube of just clay balls, which I already have, and that would be just one more stage of cleaning and drying of the um, gas itself. So lots of, lots of little things you could do to make it work, but I mean, you could keep adding more things or just use it the way it is, you know? So each is own for sure. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll give you guys more um, progress once we start having flammable, uh, flammable flame again, uh, and I'll show you guys what I'm going to do with it. So thanks, guys. See you guys in the next one.